surgery has begun. Death to the FBLA! Yo, I hit the jeweler, got some goals. I sold a little weed, but I could never sell my soul. And when I'm in LA, you find me out in Lil Toe. Come up, Oka, with my ramen, I'ma need another blow. Let's go. Give it up, Humphrey, you'll never beat me. Alpha and Omega is the worst movie ever made. At least it is to me. And mind you, when I say the worst movie ever made, I mean to me, subjectively. This is my personal least favorite movie of all time. I will admit there are movies that are probably on a technical objective level worse. But even then, most of those movies I can enjoy at least ironically. I can't believe you committed suicide. I cannot believe you committed suicide. <laughs> How could you have done this? How could you have committed suicide? But with Alpha and Omega, let's just say it's a, a very different story. The thing is, when a serious movie fails at being serious, it's a lot easier to make fun of it. But when a comedy fails at being funny or cute, it doesn't make you laugh. It makes you cringe. Make me cringe! <laughs> and Alpha and Omega is definitely cringy. Cringe. So with a cringy but relatively generic kids movie that barely made back its budget, Naturally, it spawns seven sequels, a licensed game, which is better than Arkham City, trust me, and a surprisingly passionate fan base. In fact, this movie has already been reviewed by the Nostalgia Critic, the Nostalgia Critic, and a child molester. But how bad could this movie be, really? I'm sure I, the not nostalgia critic will totally not be let down by this movie i literally called the worst movie ever made earlier in the video uh, look okay i i am um, i i need to transition to the actual review i don't know how to do movie reviews please just f fucking kill me so our film opens with wolf bobsledding and we're introduced to our main character humphrey he's the funny one we're also introduced to kate and she's the woman and she's play hunting with her sister lily who is 100 percent furry bait you can't and the wolves are all doing very goofy things. It's really funny, I really assure you. And then the wolves- the, What?! Yeah, this is how, uh, physics work. And then Humphrey and Kate are somehow in the air, and then they dive into each other, and they're a helicopter now. But they're not in love, though. This is just really bad foreshadowing. And practice hunting for our lunch. Oh good, cause I'm about to lose mine. <laughs> now if you couldn't tell, the animation is amazing. And by amazing, I of course mean it looks like an original Xbox game. I'm not even kidding either. Here's Alpha and Omega, and here's Time Splitter's Future Perfect. You get dental? Yeah. Yeah. And then they fall and die. And then Kate leaves for Alpha School. It goes till spring. Spring? But that's the whole winter away. Do a soup! And then Kate's dad comes down, and he's all like, an Alpha and Omega mixed race couple? Cringe! And then Humphrey looks at Kate's asshole, and judging by the audience of this movie, I doubt he's the only one. Alphas and Omegas can't make. Uh, not. Um, how, how do you say it? And then the title card happens, and then the wolves are back on the bobsled again. What? Get your butt out of here! And then at long last, Kate is back from Alpha School, and Humphrey and the other furries in the audience want to fuck her so badly. Kate's an alpha now, and you're you're black. What? No! You better set your sights over there, the vegetarians. Uh. Gross! Berries! I honestly really don't get this scene. Usually in comedies like these with the really gross woman, ew! Usually the woman in question is so hideous and so repulsive that nobody wants her. Yeah! Used to be shit house. But in this movie, the gross women eat berries? But berries aren't gross though! I guess eating healthy is gross. Sorry, kids. Hey, hey. Eastern pack wolves. Ah, Arabian allegory, of course. And then they rip up the Lion King. And then Kate breaks the physics engine again. And then, I don't know, John Wick starts killing people or something. And then wolf racism happens. You stupid Eastern dog. And then there's a big fight or something. I don't know. But thankfully, the Omegas are here. And they're going to make one big thing clear. This movie isn't funny. Come on, the caribou are laughing at us. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a moon I don't want to howl to. You know, that line would be funnier if, like, Duke Nukem delivered it. Damn, now that's a moon I don't want to howl to. We're then introduced to Kate's mom, who is literally Karen Wolf. If any of you wolves have hurt my daughter, I will personally rip out your eyes and shut 
shove them That's down your throat so you can see my claws tear your carcass open. And then we get a talking scene with Kate's family, and it's revealed that Kate's dad is a massive wolf racist. When they crossed into our territory, they broke pack game. But despite hating the Eastern Pack Wolves, he has no problem starting up a two-man Illuminati with the Eastern Pack Wolves leader, where they discuss things like uniting the pack and starting up their one wolf government. I'm sorry, am I watching a kid's movie about wolves or am I playing Deus Ex? It was you who gave the big speech that your daughter Kate my son Garth would marry and unite the packs. So yeah, we're in arranged marriage territory now, and it's revealed that Kate needs to marry Dennis Hopper Wolf's son, who she will meet at the Midnight Howl. She can meet Garth tonight at the Moonlight Howl. But what is the Midnight Howl, you may be asking? Well, you're about to find out, and it's prom for furries. So Kate gets ready for the Moonlight Howl. Oh, Kate. You look so beautiful. She just put a flower in her hair. And we're finally at the Midnight Howl scene and... Oh. 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 Can you describe the Nova 6 victims? You know... When I was a kid, I watched this movie in school. It was almost summer and we didn't have anything else to do. I was in like, what, fifth or sixth grade at the time? And Monsters, Inc. was skipping, so this was the only option we had. Now, up until this point, I hated this movie. It was obnoxious, generic, and I was just not feeling it. But then this scene, this is what broke me. And then I realized, I'm not just watching a bad movie. I'm watching the worst movie of all time. Like, what is this scene supposed to be? Is it meant to be a song number? Because it fails at that. The lyrics are literally just how, 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 how. Is it meant to be funny? Well, well, guess what? Nobody's laughing! Sex. Sex. And what are these dance moves? Is that the Fortnite? This scene is garbage. It's literally cringe. And we're already 15 minutes in. It can't go much better from here. So Humphrey fawns over Kate some more, but all his friends are like, Humphrey, you can't date her. He are black. And then Humphrey's friends try to kill him because he's black. And then more physics. And then Kate finally meets Garth, the man she's supposed to marry. Hey, Kate. Damn, Daniel. And at first, Kate's in love with him. Good to see you. But despite being strong and capable, it's revealed that Garth is a terrible singer. Bro, this is just trippy red. What's wrong with this? So because Garth is a bad howler, which has zero practical use whatsoever, Kate is turned off by him. So she runs from him for a little bit and meets up with Humphrey. Your uh, howling partner, he's not a, uh, he's not a stud, uh, a dud. <laughs> he's not a dud. In fact, so this goes on for a while, but then Kate gets shot. Thank God, finally. But sadly, it's with a trank dart. A trank dart full of lean, bro. Wait a minute, that's not lean, that's... And then they pass out or something, and they're transported to a brand new location. A place so far away, it looks the exact same as the last location they were in. We're then introduced to two new characters, a goose and a duck. I forget their names, so we'll have to check the Alpha and Omega wiki later. And these two characters exist for the sole purpose of being the comedic relief, which has always worked. So the funny characters are playing a nice little game of The Last of Us Part 2. Caden Humphrey then find them, and a wacky slapstick scene happens. Quick, look behind you! So then comedy happens, and the wolves find out where they are. Idaho? Idaho? And then there's a sex joke in this movie. Yeah, not kidding. You were, uh, relocated to, um... <laughs> sex. Oh, what? Poggers! So everyone's like, we gotta get back to Jasper! And the funny birds are all like, uh-huh, oh, we know Jasper! So they have to hitch a ride in secret. From a character from Ride to Hell Retribution, who for some reason sounds like Arthur Morgan. Come here, you! Oh. Let's think. You're okay, boy. And then foreshadowing. I love you, Deb. Audio jungle. And then they hitch the ride, and they're on their way to Jasper. And then completely out of nowhere, Kate suddenly has a vision of the future. This is never explained or brought up again, so this scene is fucking pointless. Even when the events do happen later in the movie, nobody acknowledges that Kate literally had a vision about them. And to think, MSN movies call this a howling good time. I trusted you, MSN movies. So Kate wakes up to Lil Uzi Vert, and Humphrey is rocking out. Meanwhile, Garth is talking to Lily. And they're really heading it off. Oh, I get it. You're a funny Omega. No, silly. I'm a woman. I can't be funny. Okay. Make me laugh. Um. Funny what? You're pretty good. 
pretty good. What's this? So yeah, uh, that all happens. And now we're at a gas station and Humphrey has to go pee. So he's about to go, but then he smells a donut. And despite having to use the bathroom really badly, he never actually uses it. This is a massive plot hole and therefore I am giving this movie a zero out of 10. But then Humphrey's cover is blown. Whose footprints are these? So then this guy comes out of nowhere and tries to kill Humphrey. So all in all, I think he's the real hero of the movie. And then Humphrey pees. <laughs> Well, at least the plot holes are answered. Kate then saves Humphrey in the nick of time, but they're blocked by a gate, and they're about to die, but then... Wait a moment, what? How the fuck does a shotgun make a hole that big in a yard guard? That is physically impossible. Who animated this? Actual fucking wolves? Anyways, they missed their ride, so they have to travel by foot, Lord of the Rings style. Trust me, I wish I were watching Lord of the Rings right now. But then it starts raining, so Humphrey does a funny rain dance. And this is truly where the Xavier Renegade Angel type animation really hits peak. What are you around. doing? It's a, it's a rain dance. Hey yo, oh, hey yo, oh, shucks. I forgot it, but we can jog my memory with the Lakota memory jogging dance. Hey yo, I can't remember the memory jogging dance. So Kate then sees a cliff and does some epic Mirror's Edge parkour, but then slips and I pray to God that she eventually dies. But Humphrey is here and he does the Nathan Drake. Take those alpha jaws and grab... Ah! I did not see that! So Humphrey saves Kate. Oh. And then there's a death fake out. We were helping. And now they're back on the trail. The next day, Kate and Humphrey wake up next to each other and their love begins to blossom. But then the train busts through the city and Leo's like, we gotta stop the train. We gotta get out of the train, Morty. And then the ducks show up and they're like, oh, there's a train. I already made the Inception joke. I I'm very creative today. Back to Garth and Lily. The two of them do more stuff together. <laughs> And then Garth realizes, wait a minute, this is an e-girl. Wow. What's your OnlyFans, babe? Back to Caden Humphrey. They're in a snowy location that only the Alpha and Omega Wiki will know about. How's that for a girl's throat? After some shit I don't care about happens, Humphrey runs into a baby bear. And the bear can speak wolf, apparently. Wow. What are you? Well, I'm black. Humphrey then starts playing with the baby bear in what is admittedly a cute and wholesome scene. And then the bear throws a snowball at Humphrey. And so Humphrey throws it back. And the once wholesome scene is completely ruined because the bear starts crying. Even though the, the bear was just playing snowball fighting with him. Is this meant to be funny? It's not funny. A kid is fucking crying. <laughs> Nobody's laughing! But then, uh-oh, there's a big bear, and that's the mother of the baby bear! Also, for some reason, the baby bear can speak wolf English. Wow. Have you heard what of the high elves? But yet, the mother bear doesn't speak wolf English? <laughs> I guess whoever made this movie never heard of consistency before. Or, I don't know, making a good fucking movie. So then there's like a, a bear action sequence. And now there's three bears? Hey, guys, you guys like jokes? How about another joke, Moray? So, okay, so two bears are uh, eating a clown. And and one of the bears says, Get what you fucking deserve! Bruh. And then Kate starts breaking the physics engine again. <laughs> But then with the power of snowballs and the power of walking backwards and the power of hanging from a tree branch Hey, Mr. Peanut, no you don't. Don't do it, Mr. Peanut. <laughs> No. They then fall off the cliff, and then Humphrey sees the tree split in half, and using the power of wolf bobsledding, saves Kate from the bear. The bear then dies, and Kate and Humphrey make it to the train safely. Hoggers. Hoggers. Back with Lily and Garth, Lily is teaching him how to sing, and that's about it. Back with Kate and Humphrey, they were having so much fun discussing what just happened. Who's that little bear in that snowball fight? It was so Oh. We almost lost our lives! That was so rad! And then we- ah! For some reason, I thought of my first fight with Tyler. Kate and Humphrey, World Adventures! What do you think? Big black nigga balls, HD. No, no, I'm telling you, we're- we're on to something here. Hey, stick with me, pup. We'll go places. We'll have seven shitty directed DVD sequels of this bullshit! Back to Lily and Garth again. Lily is teaching him how to sing, and that's about it. How? from right 
here. And use tons of auto-tune. Back with Caden Humphrey again. It's revealed that Humphrey is actually a- Oh, for fuck's sake. Who did it? Who fucking did it? Who sat down and went, Hmm, what if we put in a bunch of song numbers, but all the lyrics are the word howl over and over again? To give the song credit, at least it's uh, tolerable, I guess? Better than the last one. But it's just the words howl over and over again. There are no actual lyrics or anything. But anyways, yeah, it turns out Humphrey is a good howler? Poggers! Back to Lily and Garth again. Lily is teaching him how to sing. And that's about it. And then the song number keeps going or something. Yeah, whatever. Back to Lily and Garth again. Lily taught him how to sing, and that's about it. But then Dennis Hopper finds them, and even though he's pro uniting the packs, he's still in favor of this arbitrary wolf cast system. So the dad's all like howling with an e girl. I, I was just son, you're a simp. So the dad's all like, we're going to take the valley and our caribou. So the stakes are really high now. Back with Kate and Humphrey. Kate is sleeping and the ducks tell Humphrey, uh huh, you should be a girlfriend. And then they hit a wall. <laughs> Meanwhile, Wolf War is happening and it's getting hype and intense. You know what though? Fuck that shit. Back to Kate and Humphrey. Kate wakes up and she's like, oh Humphrey, I had so much fun today. But then she sees the Wolf War Zone and she goes, if I don't get in, then I won't be able to get the Call of Duty War Zone Victory Royale. Meanwhile, Humphrey is all like, Kate, I want to have sex with you. And now, shit's getting a little crazy. All I asked was for you to follow our customs, but no. Your daughter had to up and run away. I did run away. So Kate's finally back home, and hopefully the movie can end sooner because of it. Where have you been? In Idaho. Idaho? What were you doing in Idaho? We were supposed to... Sex. Karen Wolf then tries to choke out Humphrey. <laughs> <laughs> And then Bowser from the Mario movies are like, you have to marry Garth! And Kate's like, I will marry Garth! But Humphrey's like, I wanna fuck Kate though! And Lily's like, I want Garth though! And Garth's like, I want the E-Girl! And Abe Lincoln's like, But Joan, I love- The next day, Humphrey visits Kate. But this time he tells her he's leaving Jasper. You know, it's a lone wolf. Thing. Well, I know Humphrey the fun-loving Omega. That's the second time I've been able to sneak up on the legendary Solid Snake. Anyways, the ending is predictable as fuck. Kate and Garth are about to get married, but then Kate's like, I can't get married! I, uh... fell in love with an Omega? Whoa, dude, that's so crazy. That's like the title of the movie. That's, that's well, so- Well, some kind of suicide squad. <laughs> in love with an Omega. That's against pack law. Dad. I am a simp for e-girl pussy. And then the Dennis Hopper dad declares war. And then the war happens. And then there's a stampede of a bunch of caribou even though caribou is scarce apparently. And then Humphrey comes back. And then there's more wolf bobsledding. And then the physics engine breaks again. And then Kate dies. Like she actually dies though, no joke. Kate. And then the movie ends. Now nah, I'm just kidding with you, Kate's alive, bro. And then the dads are supportive of it out of nowhere for no reason, despite the fact that they just went to war over it. And then Garth and Lily start yiffing all over the floor. And then there's another song number. And then there's one last howl from our main couple. Are you ready? Oh yeah, ready. <sighs> Yeah, that was fucking dog shit. I'm not kidding when I say that this is the worst movie I have ever seen. This movie is the antithesis of what I like in movies. The plot is at best a generic Romeo and Juliet knockoff, and at worst a nonsensical piece of garbage that can only be enjoyed by children. The song numbers broke me mentally, the jokes aren't funny, and every time I saw any two wolves nuzzling each other, ooh, 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 raw X3, I wanted to fucking kill myself. Now, as mentioned earlier, I'm not the first one to have talked about this movie. Movie. This movie has also been reviewed by the name's Junkie. No way, my boy Junkie here. And it was also reviewed by some dear girl. I don't fucking. Despite the concept of wolf packs being explored in a fantasy setting being incredibly interesting, in my opinion, the cliche nature of this movie doesn't really help its case. Wow, this person made a fucking college essay on Alpha and Omega. This person also made a video called The End. Oh no, 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 no. I bring all these reviews up because. 
Actually, I don't know why, I just really wanted to talk about but it. But yeah, uh, this movie is extreme cringe. And I really don't like it, but I also don't know how to end videos, so, uh, I don't know, thanks for watching. cringe. <laughs> Attention, medical. Oh. Big, big chungus, big chungus, big chungus. My girl, what? Oh.